Well, I would like to preach my sermonette about how love is from God, how we can have his love in us. Man without God does not have a natural tendency to love. People in the world only think about themselves and how to satisfy their own desires. But the people who are born of God are different. God, who is love, has come to dwell within them and shines through them in everything they do. The only true form of love is from God. Some people might say they love something, um, but it's not the true, sincere form of love. In Ezekiel, it said that with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goes after their covetousness. So my text today is in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 7. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Amen. So this passage is stressing that everyone that knows God loves one another. The only way that you can have love is if you're in God. If we do, he's given us of his spirit, which is in us, and it should shine forth as love. This is the result of his spirit, which he's given to us. And when the Holy Spirit lives in us, it, and it shouldn't be secret, it should, God, it's shown by our love. Amen. And also in verse 11, it talks about, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. So we also love one another. We love one another because, of, because he loved us first. This is how we have his love, by him, giving, him loving us first and showing us how to love. Um, in Ephesians 6.23, it says, Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So this love is from God. And also in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So this new man that God has given us is, has love, has a spirit of love. And because it has this spirit of love in it, it obeys the two greatest commandments. And that's what all the law and the prophets hang on. So God has given us this love and it causes us to keep his commandments. It's God's love. Um, and it, Paul said, And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another, 
and toward all men, even as we do toward you. So God doesn't give us just a little bit of love. He, make us, he makes us abound in love. Is that, it's, that's what God is. God is love. So his children should be abounding in love too. And Jesus said, Love ye your enemies, and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. So the children imitate their father. If we have love like our father has love, shows that we are his children. Amen. So we should be like God. The, the servants don't imitate their masters, but the children do, because he's our father. Amen. A great example of how God can give us love is in Paul. In 1 Timothy, 12, 1 Timothy 1, 12, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. So before that didn't sound much like love, persecuting. He was going to Damascus to drag off the Christians to jail. But after Jesus spoke to him on the road to Damascus, he was filled with love. The, the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. So in Christ Jesus, there is love. Amen. And how does he give us that love? In 1 John 4, 19, a little later in our text, we love him because he first loved us. So if we really believe that Christ died for us, our natural response is to love him back. Amen. It Amen. comes back to this faith again. We have to believe what he's done for us. And another way we get his love is through the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Um, when you have the Holy Spirit, it will be evident by your love. If you don't have love, it shows you don't have the Holy Spirit. And it's a fruit of the Spirit. It, what, it's what comes out when you have the Spirit. And, but if we don't have the Spirit, we don't have love. Just like when the branch isn't connected to the vine, it can't bear fruit. Because we're connected to the Spirit. He lives in us. And so we bear fruit. Amen. Amen. And God is also teaching us to love. Paul said to the Thessalonians, But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. So God is continually teaching us to love. We didn't get as much love as you can have when we believed. He's continually teaching us more of love. And the more we read the Bible and study it, the more we know of God. And so the more love we can have. And because this love is from God, and only the people who are of God can have this love, it can show who is of God. Yes, amen. In John 13, in verse 34, Jesus said, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. 
So by this shall all men know that we're his disciples. It's our love that should be the distinguishing factor for Christians. It says that everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. So no matter what good work someone's doing, no matter how they look on the outside, if they don't have love, he's not of God. And when Jesus, talking to the Pharisees, said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I from myself, but he sent me. Amen. So these Pharisees did not love Jesus. And so that showed that they, their father was not God. Amen. Yes, amen. And how can we know that someone has God's love in him? John 14, 15, Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. So our love is manifested by our works. Mm -hmm. The true love that God gives in is, is an active love. It's always bearing fruit. It's, show, it's shown by our works. Mm -hmm. Amen. And this is very different from the world's love. The world's love is partial. In Matthew 5, 43, ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? So, for the people in the world, it's natural to love their neighbor and hate their enemy. But Jesus says to love our enemies. The world, this should cause the people in the world to wonder what happened to us. Why? It's because we are of God. It's because we know God. And with this love is the very most important thing. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1, it says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass, or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. So, why? It's because if you don't have charity, it shows that you're not of God. This is, this is what shows that you're of God. So even though someone may be doing all these good works, these works are good, but even having great faith so he can move mountains, if he doesn't have love, shows that he's not truly one of God's children. Amen. So we have to have love. And in closing... 1 John 3, and verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of, the, of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. 
Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. So it says, he that loveth not his brother is not a child of God. He's a child of the devil. The, the world is going to hate us. That's what the world is. It hates, but the people who have passed from death to life are loving. And if there isn't love shining through you, it means you're still dead in trespasses and sins. So we need to have that love which is from God. <clears throat>